for intimacy. But if I don't get that information, if she don't give me that information, if we don't have that conversation, there is no way I can satisfy that need. There's no way I can meet up with that goal. So constant communication, constant conversation, it's something that has to be on the table for, for spouse, for relationship to, uh, to move forward and progress. Thank you very much. God bless you. You've said a lot. So I'm going to just read what I have here and then we move on. Um, because I'm still on the reasons, the causes, why this actually happened, why sex sometimes disappear in marriages. And the most commonly reported factors contributing to sexual decline between partner is the lack of desire for sex. And why would I just like the desire? We've talked about the health issues so that's on the side. Another reason could be um, issues of life, stress from work, challenges of life, and it has, you know, it's you so immersed in your situation that you can't even be bothered about sex. You, you see your wife as maybe just your sister, or you see your husband as a brother, and you are not really, really connecting. You know, that's one. Even that should not be happening. But the, before we go there, that's one problem. Then another one is sexual dysfunction, um, which I think this happens a lot to men more, where from when they are getting to the age of 50, they start having a lot of sexual dysfunctions and they need um, to see their doctors and do a lot of things to help themselves, maybe change their diets and all that, so, um, such as erectile difficulties and all that. And another one is physical appearance concerns, which is one of the main things you have to talk about. Maybe normally you are somebody that dresses nice, you wear lovely colognes and all that. And that's how the things that bring about sexual appeal between you and your partner. And that is lacking for some reasons, you know. And if your woman or your man can't talk about it, then that can, as it seems like, what's the big deal about cologne? But that can be just a signal she needs. You know, so that can bring about uh, a difficulty in expressing intimacy. Another one could be addiction, maybe to pornography, you know, and infidelity. Infidelity, it's a major one that could be like, I mean, if my partner or anybody's partner is so much into um, extramarital affairs, you'll be scared to want to continue to have intimacy with them because you don't want to have any infection, and, it, you know, and not just physical infection, we also have the spiritual side of it. So you don't know what will be brought upon you. So you're like, you know what, if you're going to be doing this, okay, I'm going to just stay on my own and do me. Also, that has a solution. Then most, most, most participants reported that their sex life slowed down gradually as a result of one or more of these factors. And however, some reported that sex stopped Appropriately, says just stop. They cannot actually put the reason behind this, you know. And some from research, some reported that they never really had much of sex life to even begin with. So there's nothing to build on, you know. For instance, like from what uh, Prince and Dave have said, they didn't really have uh, understanding of what their sex life is even before they started. It wasn't something they talked about. Oh, I like sex, I don't like sex. I like romance, I don't like romance. So, you know, there was no understanding of that, no communication about it. So both of you can't be bothered. You actually have no idea what you were getting into. And at some point, it just died down naturally by itself. That happens as well. So now my main problem now is this. How do we solve this problem? This problem is there. And then most times when these things happen, when we have sex problem, there's no intimacy in the in the in marriage. It brings a lot of anger, it brings distance, it brings a lot of issues. You know, what do we do? Let maybe we start with the infidelity one. That's a big one. That's the biggest for me. The infidelity one. And then the next one is. Erectile difficulties. That's the second one for me. So anybody want to speak on the infidelity, how do we deal with that? Because that will kill anybody's 
urge to be near you, to have any intimacy with you. Prince D, I see your hand up, sir. Yeah, uh, first of all, I actually I want to want to buttress on what you are saying concerning uh, what is causing uh, sexless uh, marriage. marriage. You know, gifts could cause it. Gifts. Gifts, yeah. I will explain. When you started your relationship with somebody and you always buy this person, either he or she, a gift. Mm. It might just, let me even use just flower. And maybe that is what makes her happy. Mm. Maybe that is what makes, makes that person happy. But the day you withdraw that, mm, not that the flower is every day, but the day you withdraw the things you used to, all those tiny, tiny things, mm. uh, it can actually cause it can kill it can kill everything. All those little little things that you used to do from the beginning, when you withdraw it and it's not like that, things like this too can kill sexless marriage as well. Mm. Thank you very much. So we have these problems. I want us to talk about infidelity as a problem that is causing it and erectile dysfunction. How do we deal with that when that is happening in a marriage? We talk about communication. What else can be done to help situations like that? Okay. Well, what I'm going to say that in, in terms of uh, infidelity, uh, mm. if we will be sincere to one another, now I want to go back to my own route as an uh, Yoruba man. I don't know. Uh, I'm not saying this based because of I'm not saying this because I want to. I want to say it, or probably, uh, I don't want other uh, any of the men or women in the house to think, maybe I'm the, that's the kind of person I am. No. Truly, even though we know at the beginning of this world, God only created Adam before Eve came in. Uh -huh. As times goes on, things change. Solomon is there. David is there. All these people, they do their own things, and now you get our own generation. To me, the way I look at inf uh, infidelity, truly, if we go scripture, it's not something that is good, whether we like it or not. But now when it comes to marriage, especially when you do court marriage, yeah, you are not allowed to marry two wives. I've done research in different ways and I've asked people who I believe I can ask, is it a crime for a man to marry two wives? They say it's not, it's not. but if you can satisfy their needs. But the question we should be asking ourselves today, did most women agree to their husband to marry two wives? If you say the man is committing infidelity, and the is man that has solution to this, infidelity. To to yeah, I, yeah, I'm bringing all these things together. I'm linking them together. Okay. If the man, probably in his boldness, he called his wife that listen, I want to marry two wives. And the wife says no. He don't want. She said to you, oh, no, no, you are you are not going to allow me, and you will do this and that, blah blah blah, and things things like that started happening. What? is anybody's going to do about it. That's why me, I believe in choice. That's why they say another man's food is another man's poison. If a man decides that they want to do marry two wives, why are they not allowed to do it, to marry that two wives, instead of marry one, at the end of the day, they started cheating on their wife. As for me, I don't believe in that philosophy that a man cheat. Okay, can we stay back on how does that affect infidelity? as a problem for sex to can affect, Yeah, it can affect it because when the man have this strong belief that he wants to marry two wives. Okay, if the wife the man, house, sorry, I'm going to pause you there. If the man yeah. wants to have two wives, uh -huh. that means he's capable to satisfy both of them sexually. That's what I'm saying. 
Okay. That's, that's now, I'm so that means on his side, he doesn't have a problem. So the woman is going to have a problem with him. Exactly. And then the when woman can that decide the that do I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, the man will say, that, okay, if that would be the case, is what okay. any man I see can where do. you are even coming from. Now, apart yeah, from that, that yeah. if a man is unfaithful, a man is unfaithful. Even if he has three legal wives, if he's promiscuous by nature, he will still be unfaithful to all the five. I'm listening to you. Yeah, that's my point. If you are promiscuous, yeah, you are promiscuous. Yeah. So we but... the, the the case here is that we have a promiscuous person in on hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because when we talk about infidelity, it, it's it's it either one or two or half a person. It's wrong. But now we yes. have people who are serial cheats. So that's another level entirely. So for whatever reason. Most times, 99% of the time, when the, mm -hmm. a, a man is being caught, so I'm sorry, I won't do that again, the woman forgives. Mm -hmm. And then the you know, it happens. But now when it becomes the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the woman can decide, you know what, I'm going to keep to myself. And if the woman is also caught once, just once, try it once, you're gone. That is the end of it. So the point here is that infidelity has been established. And that is affecting yes. intimacy in the marriage. How do we deal with it? Well, well, if to deal with it, <laughs> uh, that says the two two wrong cannot make a it can make a right. Huh? Uh if they could get wherever they all any professional to get into it, they go for counseling mm. <laughs> for that. So that, that I think that is the only thing that I can I, that's the only thing I can talk I can Thank say. Thank you about very that. much, Prince Dick. God bless you. Yeah. Um, Pastor Stephen says having children can also cause um says desire to decline. That happens to some women, you know. Bless us, women. A lot of things happen and changes in our hormones, and when such happens for, I mean, I can speak. I don't. Why? Why are all the women in the house today? We have men, men, men here. So I'm going to be speaking for us and as a go, woman. Going to Gaza. For as a woman. You know, I believe we need a lot of patience. Men have to be patient with a woman that's got such issue. You need to be understanding with her. And you need to date such a woman again. That will work for some women. Try and date them again. Give them, give them time. And then you do a lot of romance with them to help them to come back and get out of that shell. I believe that will help a lot. But the man has to be very, very understanding and be patient with them and talk to them about their need as well and get them out of it. Try to give, give them a break with the child. Maybe get a nanny or something, take them out, get them back into that mood. So that will help a lot. That will help a lot. Anybody else wants to comment so far? Okay, I'm going to ask a question. Why do so many people remain in senseless marriages by and large, even though they are really, really distressed? They are not happy. They are frustrated. I mean, why would somebody be in a marriage? What's the purpose of marriage again? I mean, um, there are different reasons, but that's part of it. That's one of the things you enjoy in marriage. And it's, 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 it's scripturally okay, accepted, you know, to be together. The man will leave the woman, they'll cleave together and be one, replenish, multiply, and all that. When you not come together, you're not having sex for three years, five years, ten years. Why do they stay in that marriage? I don't understand. But I make answer. Sorry, I was gonna make a, a, a comment before I went out. So um, yeah. it seems to me you're moving on, but uh let me just go back to that very, very briefly. You see, the thing is that um Sexless marriage is quite a wide subject, mm. and everybody can only speak from their perspective mm -hmm. or what they know about. It doesn't necessarily have to be a personal experience. Okay, mm. um, uh, we are talking about this in the background of Christianity. Okay, we mm. are, we are supposed to be uh, as pure as possible. Mm. Okay. Um, 
and this also inculcates the fact that we all agree that sex before marriage is a no no. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we live in the real world. Okay. And the real world says that are two people who love each other and are going to come together. Um, if that physical attraction is not there, um, in my own view, then maybe you have to think about it again. Now, resisting it is quite a different subject until you get married. Okay. Mm. But where it's not, or one person is pretending that they are physically attracted to the other person, and then later on, nothing is happening, then that's quite worrying. There's a bit of dishonesty in mm -hmm. it already, okay? Uh, which is against our belief as Christians. You have to be honest, you have to be sincere, okay? Now, I have a, a case that is currently going on. These people met in a church, no sex, fine. They got married, still no sex. They have two children, but it was by artificial insemination. Now, mm. would you say that artificial insemination is godly? I'll leave that to your opinion because that's not the subject today. Mm. But the subject now, the, the matter now is that the woman who I think, I'm not 100% sure, met her man as a virgin, hasn't had sex in a marriage of nearly 16 years. Mm. She hasn't experienced sex. And the okay. man was the man is a virgin. Well, let's believe that the man is a virgin, but he's been making all sorts of excuses. The the woman is screaming, you know, on top of her head, saying, What is going on? How can I be in a marriage for 16 years? They have a 14 year old and a 13 year old. Okay. So mm. obviously, sex didn't happen, which is why they went for IVF. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as I said, it's quite a, 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 a wide ranging subject that. You cannot fuse it all in one at the same time, okay? Mm. But for the purpose of this, what I would say is that um, if you do not feel physically attracted, okay? if uh, Even if I don't sleep with a woman and she doesn't turn me on, mm -hmm. okay? I, I don't feel guilty of be, being turned on. If I see a woman and I like her and she turns me on and my body reacts, I don't feel guilty about that. That's mm -hmm. natural. That's biological, yes. okay? If if I'm not getting that from a woman, I wouldn't even dare. Hundred okay? percent. Now I've been somebody. Sorry. Hundred percent, sir. Yeah. In the past, one woman who fancied me many many years ago when I was young and you know looking a bit attractive, okay, and <laughs> I wasn't responding in how she thought I was gay. Oh, you must be gay. Until I confronted, I said, "Look, do I have to fancy you and sleep with you to convince you that I'm not gay?" I just don't fancy you in that way. Hmm. Okay? And that could also be a, be a problem for some people who, once a woman tempts them, they want to sleep with that woman to prove her point. But on the other, the flip side of the coin is that this gentleman we are talking about, the next question we are going to ask him when we meet him after Christmas, are you gay? How? I mean, how can you? Okay, he says he has uh, diabetes. He has a health issue as well. But how can you, in 16 years, since you met this woman, You've never had penetrative sex with her. Is it that you don't fancy her or that you are not that way inclined? What hmm. is it exactly? You know? Anyway, I'm going to run off now uh, because um, I'm going into a conference call where I have to make a quick statement. If you're Thank still you here, I will much. come back. I promise. Thank you very much, sir. That's a big one. That's that's a big one. That's one of the one of the examples I was talking about, you know, about women being married for years without sex. Now, if such a woman decides, this is a quick on the side, we, we're part of it anyway. If that woman decides, you know what, I'm done, I don't want to be in this marriage again. Has that woman done wrong? Yes or no? Can we have thumbs up or we speak? If she decides to leave such a marriage, has she done wrong? Hello, house. Can the woman leave such a marriage? My hand is open. I don't. I don't think she should. After they sixty need years, they need, yes, they need to prayerfully work at it. You know what have they done? What steps have they taken before they decide? Yes, I'm going to leave. Well, um, you don't, don't you think, think for sixty years they've tried a lot of things? Well, that is an assumption. Mm. That is sure. what I said. 
you know, we we need to establish what have they done, what have they tried mm. in order to restore that. Because at one point in, in, in the marriage, it might not be sexless. You understand? So when is when the sexless thing sets in, what is the cost? There might be so many reasons for, for it. It could be through illness. It could be so many things. So because we we can't just say, oh, that because I was no sex and that's it, I'm out of I'm out of this marriage. There is a reason. There is always a reason. And that reason has have they worked at it? Have they certain um, go have they been for counseling? You know, they have also there's so many things that they can actually try before we decide, you know what, I'm out of it. Because he says for better, for worse. Because there could be reason. There could be genuine reason mm. for, Thank for, you very for much, that man. for that marriage to be in that state. From what uh, Brother Emeka has said, he said that they've questioned the man and they were, had diabetes and that was has been treated. And um, even the two children they had has to be through IVF or something like that. And nothing is still happening. So always, yes, 100% there's a reason. And all the reason that is coming out, it's not holding waters. Is the woman supposed to still stay there? And why is she staying there? I don't understand. Why should she stay or why should he stay? Is that part of for better for worse? Yeah, for better. Okay, you took it from my mouth. For better for worse. It's part of for better for worse. What if there's been a deceit from the one? If there was at if there was at some point there was intimacy and then something happened, intimacy stopped. It's another different board game entirely. Well, from the scenario, but I make now said there was no sense, not once, and for um, seven years, think, not one. I actually think fifteen years is a very long time. It, it, it sounds awkward because I know we're Africans. We are, all of us have something else in our mind. We don't want to say it. it sounds awkward because how will you buy a jeep and you don't want to drive the jeep? It's questionable. You just park it in front of your house. Mm. So. The question of living and no living, I do not know. But I know that in this generation, women are fast to leave. Every two minutes, they want to leave. If that's the case, nobody will say marriage. Yes, yeah, they want to leave, but we're talking about 70 years of not leaving. 70 years is too much. Yeah, or 16, even 10 years is too much. That's what I say. You cannot buy a Jeep and just park it in front okay, of you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very it. much. Another one is, I want to say, is, um, Prince D, your hand has been up. Yes. Well, I want to agree to what, uh, uh, I don't know if she's, a, I would say Miss. Mommy Miss, Antonia, uh, yes. Okay. I think I want to agree to what she said. Uh, me, I'm a, I'm a campaigner of, uh, uh, if I say good marriage, I always pray for them. I will not advise any woman in any length or in any way. For the fact there's no violence in your marriage, I will never advise any woman to leave. Mm. They are home. Because when you are planning to leave, there will always be another woman to replace. So that is what that is that's about based on what we are treating today to the topic. Mm. That if there's an issue like that, they have to go back to the drawing board. Mm. There must be something that happened that caused it. So when issue happen, most of us we don't look, we don't go back to the drawing board, go and back to the where we start from and look. What actually caused it? It might just be a minor thing. Hmm. I'm speaking from experience now. It might just be a minor thing. But because most of us, we don't communicate, we don't talk. Especially we, the Africans, we don't talk. Hmm. We don't sit down and look that, listen, babe, let's sit down to what happened. Why are we fighting each other? Where did I go wrong? Until when they sit down, they have this communication they look back. It might be the day they had, had an argument that probably the man said, you are so stupid. That might just kill everything. Until they sit back. But being in a relationship for or marriage for 70 years, there's no sex. Uh -uh. What happened? I just now, that's, that's, they, that's, they, not, that's just the one Boremeka said it. I've had about five uh, cases like that. There is a 12 year, there is a 7 years, there is a 13 year. I have a colleague, what you said is truth. I have a colleague. She has been in the marriage for how many years? 
But for eight to nine years, the man did not touch her. So why did he marry and her? And this kills her a lot. I'm telling you. I have a That's just deceit, work. though. That's big deceit. Okay, moving on. I'm going to ask... Okay, Brad Dave, come in quickly. Yeah. Um, the the thing here is sometimes we just um, only scratch the surface. We mm. don't go in depth to, to look at the reason. For every action, there's a reaction something would have happened just like what big chief said mm -hmm. um you don't buy a car and just wake up in the morning look at the car and walk away right um if you're not driving the car something is happening mm -hmm. so you you're married some some people they've gotten to a situation where they have kids they've gotten to a situation that um they they are now room roommates staying mm -hmm. together just because of the kids i'm not leaving right I'm not going to leave this marriage, but I'm going to be here for this um, for these kids. But for intimacy, for us to do anything together, they've ruled their mind out. So was that the case in the beginning? The answer is no. Something happened that prompted that that decision. And mm. there are things that people might that people do that um, they are not aware of. That brings brings us back to what Prince Z said from the beginning when we don't communicate these things. And they start very little, right? Mm -hmm. They start very little and we sweep them under the rug. We don't talk about them. They keep growing until they become the elephant in the room that nobody talks about. And how do you clean that mess? So that's why you see people, they stay 15, 20 years, no sex in their, in their marriage, but they are living, when they come out, they leave their appearance, people see them happy, but at home, they don't talk to each other gets to a point where the kids even see their parents, hmm. not even talking to. So what role model are you building? These kids grow up, and that's why we are seeing a dysfunctional um, society, because these kids now look at this thing to be the norm, and hmm. they grow up and they live that same life that they see their parents living. Thank you very much. I'm going to read quick, uh, quickly, and then we'll go to silent and senseless, because uh, I want us to look at some of the things that can help with communication. Because that is the main thing here. Okay. Um, I was asking that how do people cope with senseless marriage? Like from the example Brother Dave said now, they do everything together and some don't even do a lot of things together. You know, out there they are all good and all, but inside they are rubbish. And then some say they try to focus their time and energy elsewhere, such like cultivating new friends, uh, throwing themselves into work, into fitness, into new hobbies, anything to distract themselves from their partner, you know, and so they can't be bothered about sex anymore. And uh, I believe you have to find a way to talk to each other and probably even go for help. Um, we have people who are relationship coaches, and we also have people who are certified sex therapists who can help you to look into the core reasons why you're having problems and help you to get your libido back. And getting your libido back or anything at all starts with talking about it. So it still ends with talking about it. And the good news is that there are a number of evidence-based solutions that can help you to come, you know, to overcome this problem and to rekindle your sexual intimacy. It is not impossible. It is possible. But are you willing to try? Are you willing to do something about it? Now, one of the few, not one, I've got some questions here that people want to, uh, you might want to look at, challenges people might be going through and they want to talk about. And one of it is, I worry something is wrong with me. What do I say to my partner? You know, you notice something is wrong with you and you're scared. How do I tell her? And because of that fear, you begin to hide. Because of that fear, you avoid intimacy. Even when she touches you, you 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 hide away from it. I don't how I don't know. How did you even end up marrying each other if you cannot talk with each other? How do we deal with that? I'm going to read a couple and then we'll talk about it. Another one is I figure she, maybe she's having an affair. Do I even want to know? Having funny thoughts, having doubt, you know, about your partner. And 
you think oh maybe she's having an affair maybe she can't be she's busy working or she's not um being intimate with you or you try being intimate with her she's giving you excuses you begin to have um negative thoughts maybe she's having an affair even if you're thinking about it ask her talk about it masturbation is also a problem for some people you know when you masturbate i mean masturbation is there Fun is easy. I don't have to stress myself, so I don't mind. You can't be bothered about being intimate. I have option B. Now that in the world we have now, when we have sex toys, I have sex toy there, so I don't need you. That is destroying a lot, a lot of marriages. And the truth of it is, living like this is lonely. Intimacy builds you. It, it makes you to match together, to sing together. It brings smile. It brings relief, stress relief. It, it does a lot. It makes you even look younger, according to some researchers, you know. And then it also breaks all the, uh, what's it called, the tension even between you two. It helps you to forget issues quickly. The fights, the bitterness in you helps you to forget it quickly and you're able to move on. And... Um, he is worried about performance. So he makes no overtures to start because he's, maybe the man is not uh, very good and maybe the woman is been complaining, oh, you're not satisfying me. Can you do better? And then the man can't be bothered. He just gives up, you know, and then pours himself into porn instead of pouring himself more into the woman. And it could be vice versa. And then the woman feels rejected. She feels angry. And she doesn't even say anything. We see boys down to not talking, and I don't see why you can't talk. Everybody's shying away from me. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, another instance is maybe your partner just ate something, it may be a garlic or something that is smelly, and you can't you don't want to tell her or him, can you brush your teeth or something? Instead, you just ignore, avoid intimacy. And then the part your partner will be like, Why are you pushing me away? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. I'm just not in the mood. Just say what it is. She he or she brushes their mouths, and then you continue whatever you're doing. Communication. She fears that she has lost sexual desire and avoid responding to intimacy by going to bed earlier or later. He feels rejected, if he's resentful. And things get worse and worse and worse. The man wants to say something about her never dressing up anymore. Maybe she dresses up, she wears special lingering to bed. She perfumes herself, you know, puts nice powder. She has a shower every night before, but now she can't be bothered. She's tired. After looking after the baby, going to the kitchen, all she wants to do is sleep. And that is a turn off for the man. Because maybe she's smelling of food, you know. But then... How can you help such a woman? You can help her in the kitchen so that she also has some energy to go into the shower. Or you can encourage her, drag her to the shower yourself. Baby, come on, let's go have a shower together or something. Help her, assist. Do not run away from the challenges. He knows he's depressed. Maybe he has challenges at work, the man or the woman. You know, has challenges at work. He's frustrated at work. And then you bring it home. Your partner doesn't know what you are going through. But if you don't tell your partner what you are going through, how can they help? How can they be understanding? How can they be, you know, uh, uh, support you? They have needs. They are asking for intimacy. But because you are depressed, because you're frustrated at work, or for whatever reason, you don't want to be near your woman, you don't want to be near your man. And then they are feeling rejected. They are feeling abandoned. And they are beginning to have negative thoughts. Why is my man avoiding me why is my woman avoiding me and then when we have all these loopholes and all these unanswered questions you know it, it builds up into something else like what i dave said before you know it a, a little ant in the room becomes a giant in the room and then you are scared how do we not deal with this forgetting there's a foundation um ah, i think it was prince did i said this you know, you used to flex with your woman before or buy her gift. You know, those are the things that keeps her, you know, on her toes and turns her on. 
One, we need to understand each other's trigger and then use it. Use that key. We just forget, we just forget, we get it so busy with life and we forget how we started. You know, partners often don't want to embarrass themselves. They don't want to hurt each other or create tension. So they don't mention that the old robe is a turn off. Go and put on something new or buy her something new. The sexual routine isn't working. This is the same thing we do every day. I'm bored, I'm tired, I'm not interested. Talk about it, work on it together. A lack of compliments is deafening. Or they are too depressed to be sexual. So it could be anything and it could be everything. It could be anything and it could be everything. But the main thing here is how do we break this non-communication? Bora Dave is being naughty here. He says men are easily lured into sex unless the man is medically challenged. Taking out the trash can make women decline sex. Ah, which one is that one? Taking out the trash can make women decline sex. How? I don't understand. How can that make a woman? No, so um, my point there is... Um... What I'm trying to say there is um, these little things um, that uh, they can bring out could cause um, could cause issues um, for a man. Um, a man can actually look at that um, that as a task that can be done later. But for a woman, it's so big that um, maybe she asked you for oh to help to with the trash. Yeah, and and you say okay, I'm going to do that later. Maybe you you you're busy with something. You come up um at night and say okay, um, can we be intimate? She will tell you no. Nope, that's uh, you didn't she has do lost. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she has lost everything. We can't um, be like that. I it. concur. Yeah, so yeah, so that's why I say um when I started from the beginning, I I actually wanted the women um to be honest and open and tell the men these little things these triggers that that uh, that could be in front that makes you people say look um this is why men are not getting much sex in in their homes uh, for men i can tell you a woman wearing a sexy lingerie can can turn a man up and if, even if the man is in the boardroom meeting he will tell all the other directors i'm going to see you later um i have to attend to something very important and the man is off, right? Mm -hmm. But for a woman, it's not that. You have to set the environment. You have to set, you have to make everything count. If mm -hmm. one thing in the middle of that, uh, all, every arrangement that you've made, um, she hears the baby cry. The whole, <laughs> everything is, everything is ruined for that, for that evening. And so tell me, a man that has planned the, all the sexy evening, how everything is going to be. You come and you tell the man, sorry, no, you're not having anything tonight. Um, that I'm is tired. why sometimes we do advise that once in a while, you take the, you have a babysitter or you take the baby to grandma or something, or you get a babysitter and you go out, go to an hotel, you know, just to refresh things up. So sometimes you might need that if you don't want to wake the baby or you don't want the baby to disturb you. And I think also for women, we need help. We are not machines, even though we try to be one. And then when the woman walks and walks, walks all, and then she's tired, and then you want to touch her, she's going to be like, what if your hand touched me, eh? Or even before you think of touching her, she's snoring. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so we also, as women, we need help. I've I've seen, I think it was a sister that was saying to me that most times she, she's tired, she's in bed, she knows that her husband wants to be intimate, but he's kind of scared to approach her. So I said to her, so if she, you don't, why don't you say, I'm tired to do so. If he cannot, if he's really, really, really wants me, they should come. If not, I can't be bothered. And then I said, speak to your man to talk to you or something. And then she said, the man said, I, I'm just, I want to, but I know you are tired, so I don't want to disturb you. How do you balance? Now ask Ask that your friend or ask that lady or the person now, mm. if the man comes out tomorrow and 
um, maybe an intern in the office, they um, went out to the pub to have a drink and um, something happened, maybe a quickie, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not justifying what he's mm -hmm. doing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that keeps happening. The man is no longer bothered because look, there is a need, and that need needs to be satisfied. Needs to needs yeah, to but be she's not stopping care. the man. It's the man that is stopping himself. No, you. If you listen to what you said, she okay. said the man said he is afraid. When it comes to a point where a man is afraid, look, when a man makes advances to you, just like when a man is chasing a girl, right? Mm -hmm. He makes these advances to you, and he sees that you're not welcoming. If you're not welcoming, you're not open. Right. Mm -hmm. And and if it's back in, in um where we're coming from, it's easy, right? Um, that can easily pass. The man can come to um his spouse and it can be tempted to be rape, and that's a different ball game. Nobody wants to get into that kind of um, space, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why he's looking at it now. Look, if I'm not welcome, if I'm not invited into the space, I don't want to go into that because things are happening. When 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 the table turns, people will say, "Guy, you're stupid." So she didn't give you, you didn't get the green light from her. Why did you have? Yeah, I understand. I understand what you right? say, hundred percent. So, but this is so not when, the same case. It's not. In this, you're case, not. You're. Not, so that's why I said, like, I can, I can speak in the perspective of a man. I can't speak in the perspective of a woman. Mm. So that's why, it, with my spouse, I have this conversation. Look, what can I do? What do we need to do? If this thing is not working well, what can we do to improve it, right? Mm. So if you're tired, if you need help somewhere, if you need to do this thing, right? I know things that I can do to help. Well, Dave, out. maybe you, you didn't hear me well. She's not the one complaining of being tired. It's the man that said he is feeling sorry for her. And that is why he doesn't want to. She senses that this man needs it. But she doesn't want to go because she's tired. But she expects that if you really want this thing, come to me. Even if I'm tired, I am willing to help you relieve yourself. But since so you're coming, I can't be bothered. Is it a crime or is it written anywhere that this to initiate sex has to come from a man? I don't no, know. No, no, Maybe no, 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 no. We're talking of. It's it's not about who must initiate. It's about how do I explain this? I'm I'm not I'm trying not to jump into what I do not too much. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You know, if, but from what she's... I know from from the expression she gave me is that she is willing, but she is tired. But then, if you want, if she if he comes to me, I will do my duty. But if you're willing to eat pounded yam, do you ask um uh do you ask the pounded yam to come to you or you go but to if to you eat want to eat pounded yam and you're feeling sleepy, you will sleep off while you're eating that pounded yam. It happens. <laughs> so the point here is <laughs> if, if the man actually <laughs> wanted it, don't it's not about rape, but show your intention more so that the man, the woman can concede. But if you say, Oh, I'm feeling sorry, you are tired today. Tomorrow is because I know you are tired. I don't want to disturb you. Then it, she will continue to enjoy being tired. So the man also has to show that they really want this. Why would you be scared to, to express your feeling with your woman? And if you know she's oh. tired, 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 help her out in some things or distract her, get her out of the kitchen or whatever is making her so tired. Big chief, sir. Hello, good evening again. Um... I was listening in the background and I've been trying not to say much because I know this thing is uh, PG, parental guidance. So we'll not fire everything. <laughs> but for what you're saying with Brother Dave now, I understand what he's saying. I've been out many times and if you know the number of men that will complain that if they don't make the first move, nothing happens. If you know that number, you'll be alarmed. That can also kill intimacy. And if you have a man that is married for 20 years and for 20 years he's making the first move, after a while he feels that he's not desired. If he feels that he's not desired, he begins to shut down. And you know that men cannot pre pretend with their equipment. Women can pretend. If he's not up, he's not up. Mm. So if the, if the man steps in and he doesn't see the world start in your eyes, 
and it happens happens like that repeatedly, he feels it's not desired. Hmm. So there is no need to try. And he cannot even fake his own. You can fake your own. Hmm. Okay, thank you, sir. Mommy, Antonia. Yes, thank you. I was just going to comment on what you what you just said. Yes, ma right. To be honest, I think she's not being fair. Hmm. Yeah, and like what Big Chief said, and 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 the well, gentleman or that spoke before. Hmm. Right. Even if if she knows quite well, right, that okay, this man wants something, or or it's been a while we've done whatever. Right, it, it, there is nowhere it is written, which I agree hundred percent that who should make make the first move. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because she can't be saying I'm tired every time, and this is what we do as women: we drive our men out. And he gave a very good example of somebody, you know, um, an office in intern that might say, oh, okay, let me just have a quick one. Mm -hmm. That he just wants to release himself. He, at that time, he doesn't care whether it, that's the wife or whoever. He just wanted to do what he wants to do. And we and he can't sometimes they cannot control it. I'm not saying that should be the case. Of course, but one of course. Is, we this don't just happen leave, anyway. Yes, we don't leave room for things like that to happen. Then what do we do? What 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 are we even teaching our children? If we as mothers are behaving like that, you know he wanted something, you know he has not done it for quite a long time. You know you should have done it, even you know fully well you are not even tired. But you just pretend that you're talking, oh, if he wants it, let him go. No, it's not about if he wants it. It's mm -hmm. something that you should be doing together. You should enjoy it together. That is what is called marriage. It's not simply one person. It doesn't work like that. It's not for him to say, oh, if he wants it. No, excuse me. What kind of mentality is that? Oh, if he wants it, let, then let him come. I won't say I will give it to him. No. That's not being fair. And that's not, I don't know whether she's operating in love. Because if you love that person for real, you you will make the approach whether he wants it or he doesn't want it. Let him be the one that say, oh, my dad, you are tired. Let, let's skip it for today, maybe tomorrow, when you are not too busy or when you have not had a busy day. So mm. that's his how it should be. Not her saying, oh, if he wants it, let him go. Excuse me. It's not hmm. about, I don't think that is, is fair. Thank you, Mommy Anthony. Thank you, see men. Thank you. Yes. See, see, see them. See them. See, see them. See them doing thank you. I want to, hmm. I want to say something. Praise the fire. Uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, uh, Mommy Anthony. Uh, I really appreciate what you just said now. If I was the 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 man in question, the, the, the husband of that woman mm. that uh, the host said uh, Honestly, since you know that uh, whenever your wife uh, eats to the bed, she always tired. When she's in that kitchen cooking, eh, that's where I would do whatever I want to do. Correct, man. I like that. I don't care. <laughs> that, that's I where, I'm, food, that's where me I am the, going. Stop waiting for her. The food, I like that. If, come on now. Food, come on. Come on now. 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 If the food split come everywhere, on. I'm not, I'm less concerned. I come will on. be there. That's what I'm there. looking for. Let's go. After, sure. after she finished, we'll go to, uh, we'll have shower together. Mm. we continue from there. Mm. But by the time she reached bed, she, her energy will come. Mm. Her energy will come back. Not that well. Pastor Siri, uh, receive anointing. I rest my case. God bless. Don't break this table, every one of you. That is the point I was trying to derive at. And thank God we got it finally. Now, Mommy Antonia, I understand you perfectly. But from what she's saying, our mentality and what she was trying to say is, come on, man, if you really want this thing, take the cloth off me and let's get it done. And that's what Prince D just said now. And that is, let's balance things up. You are my woman, you are mine, and I want you. So let's... Let it be known that I want you. Don't be doing like cockroach or just get, get on with it. And as a woman as well, make yourself available. And on the communication part, I want us to wrap it up on the communication one. Pastor Stephen Oyasa. 
the table has been shaking. Go on, sir. Yeah. Thanks, guys. It's going to be a beautiful conversation. Um, uh, Mother Antonia, yeah, you brought it home. And, you know, it, it's, this, is, this is the reality of the situation. My thoughts on this, men want, most importantly, two things in relationships. Respect. Oh. Yeah, mate, sorry. I'm just going to go back to me. Right. Fine, I'm just going to ask that. If okay. It goes off, I just need... Just bear with me. He'll just be sitting in his van. No okay. Problem. No problem. No problem. Um, sorry about that. I'm still at... Sorry about that. I'm still at work, guys. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So the two things, respect and sex. If we get the respect, okay, sex, we want this thing. We need this. If we got to go to beg, borrow, and steal, then we're putting our whole relationships in jeopardy, you know? And, you know, as, as I said on there earlier on, you got to spice this thing up. If it's dying for whatever reason, you got to woo again. Yes, children come in and they make, they have their effect, but you are two, two individuals. And I really do believe that, you know, relationships decline over time for a variety of reasons, absolutely. But that thing, sex, if we as men are deprived of it, it can cause big, big, big problems. And, you know, we shouldn't be, uh, going down the route of uh, uh, um, having the man having to coax it out because our lovely ladies, hopefully, prior to, and, you know, n now I think it's so important that if we, we, all of us on here, having this conversation with the next generation that are coming through should be telling them to have this sexual conversation before they get into marriage. Find 100%. out from the person that you intend to marry where where they've been what's their history what do they say right now what's your body count if mm. they have one you know this is this is real true talk that we should they, they need to be having with us as elders right now so uh, what, what you know we need to create an environment where these next generation are able to ask us uncle auntie mummy daddy how do you do this? How do you, how will you, and, you know, especially our children. Our children need to be seeing us daddies touching our queens. Mm -hmm. Our queen, you know, our queens saying, hey, baby, you know, they need to be seeing this so that they can replicate the God way of wooing and keeping your marriage full of sex and fun. I'm done. Thank you very much. Can I clap? Back, 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 back. God bless you, sir. And that is just a nutshell of it. I'm going to read Proverbs 5. And the Bible said something about what we're talking about. It's a lot of it. I'm just going to read this one. Proverbs chapter 5, 15 to 19, I believe. I'm going to read what the Bible says. I'm going to give you my own interpretation. Drink water from your own cistern and fresh water from your own well. Should your springs be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the street. It's, it sounds like poem to me. Let them be yours alone and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. As a loving hand and graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times. Be exhilarated always with her love. It's proverb. Why she's a proverb? Sounds like a song of Solomon to me. So if you want to read that at your own time, it's fine. And I mean, there's one or two things that's funny to me here. It says, drink water from your own cistern. That is, enjoy what is yours from your own. Don't go and drink from another person's cistern. And fresh water from your own well. You have it in your home. Enjoy it in your home, your own well, your own wife, your own husband, and stop picking your nose into another person's well. Should your spring be dispersed abroad, whatever that spring means to you as a man, you understand? Should you not disperse it abroad, spread it to London, spread it to Kenya, spread it to everywhere? Should your streams of water be in the street or should it be in the home? Let them be yours alone. Should your wife be shared around? Or should she be your solo? This is my interpretation. And not for strangers with you. 
we have um the world has gone bananas now we have men who share their wives women who have um three sons with their husband okay and the bible is saying are they for strangers let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth i'll stop there it's been a beautiful night any other contribution before we wrap it up any question any addition yes uh yeah okay yeah go ahead. communication is you know <laughs> Is very, very important because you actually touched on some sad things, but you said a lot, which uh, I can't go through everything now. You know, the first one you talk about is uh, if somebody's going through some sad things in their in their head wise, mm -hmm. I will advise anyone is something that you have to let your your spouse know mm -hmm. that, you know, I can't do this based because of this. But the problem is, that's why it's very, very important to know who you are. You are, you are dealing with. If you tell your spouse what you are going through, will he or she keep that to herself or look for help or she will just start talking about it? Mm -hmm. And you know, when, That's another when, one. You share, when you share your problem with who you call your spouse and from there you share it with another friend from there, there, there there's a story about a, a, a couple in this country. The man, after he had the intimacy with the wife, he likes doing it from 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 the back, and the woman was complaining about it. And the man would say, "Because I'm your husband, I, I enjoy doing it." When she was looking for help, she went to go and talk to another sister in her own church. Okay, now thinking that she will get it, she will get help there. The sister now told some other sisters. Oh no! And now it now became a shame to that couple until they left that environment, moved to another place. So when we are talking about communication, yes, yeah, good to talk, but at the same time. Whatever, whatever is your family secret, I think, even though you are going to look for your help, there should be privacy. Not be yeah, not not the way you are going to present it. And if you want to communicate with your partner or your uh, your your spouse in a different way where they are lacking, I think is it is good to to talk in a, in humility and in love, babe. I think you know what you eat garlic earlier. I think I want you to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just try to get a word marshal. So, someone like me, I want to use myself as an example. Me, personally, I don't like to, to, to smell any bad odor, regardless of whatever it is. There's no how strong I am. Once I perceive any bad odor, my, my, I will just go down straight. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Even though me, myself, I don't know why that is happening. So if I see something like that as a man, I have to know a way how to do what to be able to tell the woman that, listen, I think you have to do this. You and the woman also should not important. take offense. Offense, thank you very much. Most women that we do, even though most men, even if men. the woman is going mm -hmm. to tell her spouse, her spouse that, listen, babe, yeah, I'm not getting satisfied enough. Uh, sorry, men, I don't know. I, I know some men who don't like foreplay. I don't think it was written in any dictionary or in any Bible that you cannot do foreplay with your, with your wife or with whatever you are going out with. But when we go out there, we can do it. But do anything you can do. Before, this one is your wife. Do whatever you want to do. Anything you like to do. Thank you very much. Don't break the table. God bless you, sir. God bless you, Christy. Brother Dave, sir. Yeah. Uh, my... No. Sorry, yes, my sir. point is, yeah, my point is um, coming back to what we said about um, about intimacy. I posted something on the chat um, in First Corinthians 3, 5, 7, mm -hmm. uh, that talked about, so everything in the scripture is already handled, right? But some of us tend to use, want to use religion as a front to, to cover up things. That's wickedness. It's witchcraft. This, no, so you won't, uh, they still bring in the religion to say, yeah, um, I'm fasting. Even the Bible says, even if you're fasting, right? It should be for a time so that you don't allow the devil to come in. It yeah, says so, it there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there are things that you do. I'm not even saying about the female only. Even men, there are some men that will tell you that they are in the altar. Mm -hmm. And mm. the rest, and they don't want to touch their spouse. Mm. It comes to a point, according to what um, my brother said, there is wickedness. 
because the Bible said when it gets to a point, right, you take care of that your spouse, unless you are uh, you are a priest or something, and you've already um, said in your heart. A priest will not even have a wife. If you have a wife, you, you still yes, have to do your duties. Yeah, and that's the point I'm saying. Unless you say you're a priest, that you're not going to have a spouse. That one is already uh, set um, already set. Yeah, but if you have, you have a duty, just like you have a duty for your children. That's the same way you have a duty to your spouse, be okay. the man or be the woman. When it gets to your duty, there are things that they've already made for you, like for the man providing, the wife giving the love and the affection to um, to the family. It's already there. So what I keep telling people when I discuss with people, there's, there's a manual. You can't just buy something and just start using it like that. Go to the manual. Our manual is the Bible. Read the Bible, read anything that you're finding difficulty in. There are people that have gone through it. Nothing new that is happening that has not happened before. Go there, learn from it, and it's going to help your relationship. Thank you very much. In all and in all, let us also remember Hebrews 13, 4, which says, marriage is to be held in honor among all. And the marriage bed is to be undefiled. For fornicators and adulterers will be judged. So even if your wife doesn't know what you're doing, if your husband doesn't know what you're doing, God knows. And he has a way of paying everybody accordingly. Accordingly. Does anybody have any question before we go? Anyone at all? I want to make sure this is treated, done, and dusted. Okay, I think it's all done. And again, to add to what Brother Dave just said on fasting or as ministers, please, when you're doing these things and hiding under religion, what you're practicing is called witchcraft. It's not until be, be, uh, before you carry jars or you begin to call witches before you do witchcraft. Say. There are so many things we do that it's pure wickedness, it's witchcraft say, against one another. You know, there has to be, before you even say you want to go into fasting, you have to speak to your spouse first. You do not need their permission, but you need their consent and their understanding. My dear, I'm going to be in fasting for the next three days, the next two days. So they also prepare their mind and they support you in what you're doing. So they also give you that room, you know. And so they say, okay, three days, okay, that's fine. Seven days, ah, oh God, what's going happen? Why seven days? Are you doing that kill Jesus? You need to explain to them, be patient with them. You know, any fasting that is more than seven days, you're on your own. God bless us all. Thank you all for joining, even all the new faces that are joining tonight. Sister Anna, I see you there. God bless you. Um, Big Chief, all on board all the time. God bless you. Prince D, you broke the table today. I owe you one. Pastor Stephen, thank you, big brother. Mommy Antonia, hmm. the woman will call meeting for you. We'll do back meeting for you. Don't worry. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> but Allah yeah. But Awali Jima is a Muslim. And I remember there is a quote with the Muslim that says, if you are five, um, if you are because the Muslim do five prayers every day. So even while they are praying, they are praying and doing their recitation and everything, and their wife, you know, demands for their attention. According to the Quran believe you are supposed to leave that prayer and attend to your wife then after that you have a wash pray and then you go back to your prayer that is how important it is even in the islamic religion so let's not use religion to to do wickedly wickedness against one another hmm? god help us all and keep our home in jesus name i'll be able to put into practice and correct some norms, even from the teaching we did tonight. God bless you all and stay blessed. Uh, I don't know if it's Brother Nonzo. Thank you for joining. Brother Tim Baba, hmm, that name, Tim Baba, Tim Baba. God bless you, sir. And for all that has been in and out, God bless you. Until next week. Ah, next week, Sister Ade Kotujo will be joining us. She's a lawyer. And we're going to be looking into, what's that thing we're talking again? inheritance and the rest of it next week men come on let's talk about you how are you going to build inheritance eh have a good night and god bless you all